Our next segment is about a workout trend that's actually not new at all. The cavemen figured this one out. Have you ever heard of primal movements? Here to take us back to basics is fitness expert Brent Bishop. Let's Thank get you. primal. Let's get primal. What are primal movements? Why do we need to incorporate these into our daily training? Yeah, so we're essentially born with seven primal movements, and those are mm. squat, lunge, push, pull, bend, twist, and gait. So gait being okay. walking patterns, crawling patterns. Yeah. But the importance of these, you know, when you see kids, of course, like toddlers, I think of my son, you know, little B. Bro, He's 10 now. He but does it all. He does it all. A ton of energy. They can yeah. drop into a squat, perfect form. Mobility's yeah. great, but as we get older, what, what happens? We work more, we sit Harder. more, and we move less, right? I've said so to my trainer, it. all I really want to know what to do is to get on the ground and get up again yeah. gracefully. Like, it's just show me thing. that and Absolutely. I'm good. So primal movements are going to, you know, not only help you build your strength, enhance your mobility, but from a longevity and a, and a resilience standpoint, yes. it's huge, right? Okay. And I will say, you know, resistance exercises that are more isolation, like bicep curls and tricep press downs, you don't have to throw those out of your workout plan. They are yeah. still good, great strength builders, but... Implementing primal movements should be the staple of your strength workouts, and that's going to help. You're, you're going to be able to take advantage of reap the benefits of some of these functional um, adaptations where you're able to, you know, pick up your children properly. You're able yes. to, like you said, get off the ground without uh, problems. And that's right. Tie your shoes. Do Tie all of shoes. these things. So let's break down some of these movements. We're going to start with a squat. Talk to me about in real life what might we be needing a squat for? Many things. Yeah. So sitting in a chair, like the chair you have behind you here. Yep. Uh, going to the bathroom, sitting, sitting down, going to the bathroom. Public restrooms, y'all know what there, I'm talking about. There we go. About. How long we can you hover? We learned this from a very young age. You do the hover, and you're like, doo, 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 how much did I drink today? Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, Woo! many different many different things. Getting up and down off the ground, out of yeah. the couch. You know, the lower the seat, obviously, the more difficult. And as we age, yeah. you know, we end up having to lean forward to get out of the seated position. We want to keep that that mobility throughout, right? So okay. a great exercise that is, I think is one of my favorite, and I think a lot of people should implement, is just in more of a front-loaded position. It's called a goblet squat. So okay. you hold the dumbbell. Again, you toe out a little bit, but just yeah. like you're sitting in a chair, the beauty of this is you're also working the back of your body to hold that posture tall. Yeah. You're just gonna sink down into the heels, Oh, look at that form. Street, but look at that. B, yes. do me a favor and turn to the side, yes. because when you look and go down again, like that's there so go. good. That's how it's supposed to look. So this is pulling Squat me forward, on that toilet. but I'm keeping my, myself upright by utilizing all those postural muscles in the back, which is right. a key thing with sitting, at, sitting down and standing up. So when you go home and you go pee, you do the hover and you time it, okay? And you see if your form is just like B's was. <laughs> and then when you're 90, you'll holding. still be doing the squat. Okay, let's talk exercise. a little bit about uh, pulling. Yeah, so pulling and hinging. We do yeah. this a lot from day-to-day -day activities. Picking up, like, picking up your groceries. Here, I'll give you these. Let's see your form picking up these grocery bags. Okay, see if you I can em? do this. Yep. So <laughs> well, I got, gra grab me I that one, please. Well, you can't hinge down to get that? Yeah, I can't. <laughs> I'm in heels, okay? So, ah. Yes, good. So you're hinging right? and you're pulling. We do this for many different things in, from day-to-day -day activities. Yeah. But I will say one of the most important things I'll just quickly demo with you. You can set your bags down. Thank you. Um, we're going to use a dowel. My groceries so, are way heavier than that, by the way, in real life. <laughs> I know. You can handle it. <laughs> so you're going to grab this. Now, you can use a broomstick at home. I advise everybody watching to actually try this. Let's get this hand in the, in the neck area. So okay. one hand, if you can see, is at the neck area. One is at the low back. We have three points of contact, the thoracic, the uh, tailbone, and also the head. Now, Tracy's going to hinge forward from the hips while maintaining those three points of contact. Yes. Here we go. So okay. quite often what happens, of course, if you go again and just round your back like a camel. Oh, like this. Right? And then you're going to lose this. You're going to lose that point of contact. You're putting your back in a little bit of a bad position, especially if you're, you're picking up a load like grocery bags or something. Even so heavier. we don't want to do that. We want to have this all that. connected. Yeah. Exactly. So okay. practice that at home. Get that hinge down because it translates to things like deadlifts. Right. You know, like bent over rows, all these exercises that we do in the gym that are so crucial for posture. Right. Okay. Moving forward, we're going to talk about lunging, pushing, twisting, which I, when do we, when would we be doing that in real life? I mean, there's a billion things we're doing, right? Billion things. Shoveling. Oh, yeah. Right? Shoveling the snow. Shovel. Well, if you go automatically into your position, you're lunging now, yeah. you are pushing, and now you're going to twist to throw Oof. the snow, right? Right. And it's the twist part, I think this is what yes. gets a lot of people. Yes. If you're hinging right? improperly, yeah. you, you you're can fine. wrench your back. Right. If, you, if it's improper, exactly. Okay, so let's look at what we need. What's the move okay. that we need to do? So the move that we need is going to be a lunge. I'll use a dumbbell with mine. So you can okay. stay in your lunge position. Okay. Essentially, we're lunging forward, we're pushing out, and then we're twisting up on an angle, getting that torso activated, and just returning to the original position. I just won't return. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I'll just this be. is also in, in many different sports, like Stay racket right sports. Like, actually, does anybody have a football? It'd be great because football is. Uh, there we go. Oh. Good catch, good yeah. catch. So throwing a football, same thing. You're going to lunge into it. Okay. Don't, don't wail it at me now. I will not. Easy, easy. I'm not very good at throwing exactly. the football. Exactly. So it's lunge. Yeah. And then that, hey, that hey, hey. push Take and that twist ease. is where all that power is coming good. from. I'll go underhand for you. Okay. Let's see another throw. There we go. Good, that was good, a better good. one, too. Okay. Anything else? Do we have time for another one? No, we don't. <laughs> and no, we don't. Brent, thank you so much. Wasn't You're that welcome. good? We got to practice. Do the squat. When you